ladies maid by katherine mansfield children i i want to share you this lesson video for you because we haven't completed in the classes this ladies maid by katherine mansfield so this is uh, this belongs to fifth unit so first unit second unit third unit, second unit is all you know it is poetry and third unit is uh, julies people and fourth unit is silence the court is in session i already gave you the lesson teaching notes mm, uh, i already gave you the notes belong to those four units and i am also giving you the notes on this ladies maid and uh, i stand here irony so these two stories i want to insist you to write in the exam for unit 5 you um, paper 5 for special english paper 5 so this ladies maid we haven't completed in the classes so i want to share you a video of this class so ladies maid by who wrote this katherine mansfield so she is a writer so we already know this writer she is nothing but um, dolls house writer you know the dolls house dolls house written by katherine we all know the story and how it runs but this is different the story now we are going to read is totally different from the dolls house this is only a dramatic monologue so in upcoming we will know now we are now the introduction of the katherine mansfield see the writer katherine mansfield so it, she's also called as kathleen mansfield murray was a new zealand writer essayist journalist widely considered one of the most influential and important authors of the modernist movement so she is widely so well known as most influential so she her writings are influenced important authors of the modernist movement so she is also a essayist a journalist and even the short story writer her works are celebrated across the world so not in one country or so are two or three countries but celebrated across the world and have been published in 25 languages how many languages it was published it was published in 25 languages she was born on 14th october 1888 wellington new zealand died on 9th january 1923 forentan blue france she died in france she was born in new zealand her spouse is john middleton murray because of this murray family she married murray family so she has become the kathleen mansfield murray um, in 1918 so her uh, um, parent parents are harold Bu harold bucam and annie bucam the siblings are leslie heron vera uh, jani shorretty guandolio so these are the siblings for katherine mansfield see coming to the story and it's a summary see the summary was published first published in 1920 the story is told in the first person by ellen so the main character is ellen here so this story totally the story was told by ellen but at the same time meant to be told to madam always the story insists on saying madam 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 so the first person who the uh, the story is telling is ellen so she is saying to the story to the madam she has worked as a who who has worked she has worked as a ladies maid for the same family for many years this ellen has made as a as a ladies maid to the family who who she is bothering as madam she worked for many years the ladies may the story expresses regret regret means feeling sorry why don't i have done like this i could have been done like this so feeling such kind of a thing is called regret this story expresses regret that this lady had wasted her life on her lady instead of having a real life who is that lady expressing regretless is ellen ellen is a maid for that lady this story the ladies maid story expresses a regret a regret means feeling sorry that this lady had wasted her life 
on her lady on her lady so the master instead of having a real life without having a real life she wasted her total time she invested all her lifetime on the lady serving her the writer catherine has achieved this to various narrative conventions so how she wasted her life her she how she wasted her life on her lady to be shown in one kind of issues narrating such kind of issues means uh, she brings to the notice of such kind of situations different themes making not only issues not only showing the issues but also different themes characterization different characters she will exhibit so in some other character she will act in in one way in some other character she will act in another way so that that is to be revealed this story is a dramatic monologue story is a dramatic monologue so the story is a dramatic monologue what is a dramatic monologue the reader over hears somebody speaking aloud to another person the reader over hears somebody speaking aloud to another person i think you could understand the reader means we people when we are reading the story over hears so we come to know that somebody is speaking aloud to another person so when we are reading a story someone is speaking loudly to another person how how come how come if you read the story you could understand very clearly what is a dramatic monologue somebody if the person we they want to express on the stage on the stage they want to express that they are speaking to some other person that uh, exactly they don't speak but the thing is they are saying to some other person that is called a dramatic monologue mono means single two means die dialogue means two people speaking together is a dialogue mono means single single person only speaks but the thing is speaking to some other person without the character the character is not there but we should understand that the character is there so if we read the story we could understand that it is a monologue so log is log is a dialogue speaking some dialogue but the thing is mono so one only speaks to the other person without any character in front of that so that is called dramatic monologue next she is portrayed very garrulously what is garrulously means talkative who is talkative here the our main character is ellen ellen is portrayed in such a way she is too talkative who is a the lady's maid maid is nothing but ellen e l l e n ellen is portrayed very garrulously she is continuously speaking she is continuously saying some something in a dramatic monologue the reader over here somebody speaking aloud to another person the monologist has a particular reason for telling a particular story to a particular audience here there is something meaning beside that why because if she is used the dramatic monologue she could use anything she could express it in some other way but thing is only she had taken such a kind of a, a choose and such a kind of a thing and his or her speech as in real life is spontaneous and unrehearsed so no any rehearsal so in real life it is spontaneous because that it is spontaneous it happened in such a way spontaneous means anukokunda ala jarigi povadu and unrehears without any rehearsal it happens so that's why in real life it is spontaneous and re rehears that's why so the monologue is here that is ellen she tells her own story in such a spontaneous way what had happened to her what had to happened in her real life that is here spontaneously sharing with we people so coming to the story ellen once she fell in love with a man named harry who owned a flower shop so this ellen the lady's maid so no no any mention of the lady the lady's name is not at all mentioned in the story 
Ellen continuously tells with some situations what had happened to her, why she has become a lady's maid, and what had happened for her. So she fell uh, when serving with this lady only. She she comes to this uh, this lady as a very young girl. This lady just like a mother. She feels everything for this Ellen, and she is and sees her whereabouts and everything. She has been very much concerned. The master. master is very much concerned of the servant so she stayed there itself what had happened when the when the thing is going on this ellen falls in love with the man named harry who owned a flower shop when harry asked her to marry him ellen was thrilled but as she wedding day get closer she chosen to stay with the my lady of ron so the wedding day approaches and everything happens she is happy she is happy of being to be individual and independent but the thing is when the day approaches and it comes very near she only chooses to stay with the master but not to marry and stay individually why because she feels so much gratitude that if she goes away from this lady what will how could she will survive she comes to such kind of a never the lady says don't get married but the thing is she only feels our brains are such type of accustomed for thinking of this could show that she was afraid of new commitments why she was afraid afraid of new commitments even though her attitude towards marriage was very down to earth here down to earth means nothing but trying to have a marriage with a flower shop just a flower shop owner coming to the Ellen's inner rebellion. So she is quite rebellious, strongly portrayed. How, if she is a rebellion, she could have been get married. But the thing is, what happened? I said this fate. So the fate is not at all in favor of this girl. Ellen's inner rebellion is quite strongly portrayed. How, whenever she is trying to do something for her own choice, she is being punished or stifled. Stifled means. Coming to be silent, her hand burned for cutting her own hair. Her own hair. What happens when she is very quite young? Her she becomes an orphan. So she comes to grandfather. Grandfather owns a shop of saloon. So he everything every day whenever she comes to the grandfather's shop, she is observing what her grandfather is doing. so once she tried with her own hair she tried the cutting of hair with with her own hair so what happened so grandfather made him made this girl punished by making burning her fingers so that made her so that punishment that punishment what her grandfather has given scared her a lot her hand burned for cutting her own hair kept from riding the donkeys since she was in uniform so for this riding donkeys has also been uh, caught punishment for her these two incident made her to run away from the house and was made as a so uh, and was made as a lady's maid in some other house so these two incidents are punished whatever she has done is a wrong it and again she even got punished that's why she don't want to take her own decision and was strongly rebelled in herself whatever i am doing for myself if whenever i do something for myself i am getting punishment for myself this is another reason for her to refuse of for the refusal of the marriage she is quite unhappy as her freedom is awfully restricted and her life seems to be vulnerable vulnerable means getting so disgusted so unhappy as her freedom is awfully restricted if she marries sure there is no any freedom she must be under the circumstances under the radius of her husband and that family whatever the commitments everything to be committed a good example of ellen's naivety means helplessness she can't do anything is when the lady drops her handkerchief and began to stoop to pick it up herself a thing she never did see a good example of ellen's naivety naivety means passiveness is when the lady lady means the master of this uh, ellen 
drops her handkerchief she just drops her hand and began to stoop began means she want to bend she is bending to take that handkerchief to pick it up herself a thing she never did so this lady the owner of ellen never she stoop or bring something so she want to help catch she want to catch this ellen's attention she want to see without uh, without ellen she is unable to do anything that she want to focus to the ellen that's why she wantedly drops the handkerchief and want to stoop then immediately ellen interrogated and prevented her from doing so ellen never she agrees so interrogated and prevented from doing so what is that she bends and took the handkerchief and gave it to lady so so ellen is in such a way concerned to the ladies to the owner of the lady she is still very loyal to her lady even when she knows she is about to get married even she is going to get married she is very loyal she do, yeah, see she, her individuality was totally given up the lady is still the focal point of her life ellen seems to think that my lady never thinks of herself but in reverse see what she is thinking she is thinking totally in reverse think that my lady never thinks of herself ellen is thinking in such a way that she don't have any any that the master the ma master doesn't have any inner feelings self self master is not self centric she is thinking but totally self centric the lady the lady owner the lady's maid owner is totally self centric because she want to expose she want to drag ellen's attention and even then she don't say that oh, no you should get married you should become individual never she says like that so even then she is feeling ellen is feeling that that the master is not self centric ellen seems to think that my lady never thinks of herself this could be the truth but according to the story about the donkeys my lady doesn't necessarily think of ellen so much either never this owner never she thinks about this lady's maid maid ellen ellen does not seem to realize this maybe because she is naive helpless so she don't have such kind of thinkings maybe because she just wants someone to care about her so ellen just thinks of someone to care so that may be a lady mansfield depicts in this short work how the master servant relationship can shape the attitudes of both parties here master and servant so the two combination the two realities how it would be so what is the position of the master what is the position of the servant so what happens whatever the work done by ellen is totally enjoyed by the owner and she is even pretending not to get married she wantedly drops the handkerchief so there is no one for her to assist in everything and want this lady's maid to be with her and she is uh, she, she just like a scam just like a plan just like a scam she just makes such kind of a situation not uh, that this ellen could not get married and to be stayed loyal to for this master only so what catherine mansfield want to express is how the master and servant relationships are made and what kind of attitudes are there for the servant and the master how the servant behaves and how the master behaves it is nicely portrayed by nicely portrayed by catherine mansfield achieved the through various narrative conventions so the story is totally told in situational wise issues themes characterization the reader over here somebody is speaking aloud to just read the story so that you can have such kind of an idea been punished or stifled what happens and the next one she want to have a donkey ride in that also she was been punished again so her her freedom everywhere is cut off so she becomes so awfully restricted in her life seems to be if she want to take her own choice to be individualist even then it may happens in such a way she thought it may get a punishment for herself she thought she thinks in such a way 
and wants to drop the idea to get a married and try to be a servant for her whole life with this lady with this uh, lady ellen try to read the original text it is very simple and brief uh, two or two pages that's all if you read you can get the summary very nicely and i even gave you the answers it's quite interesting read children so the beauty you see in the world is simply a reflection of the beauty if you enjoy the story with your own heart you will feel ellen you will feel the madam how the society is try to be a responsible citizen of the society and try to read this story what are the things happening in the world you could observe thank you all children thank you all